What are the most important security settings to enable? Now, I feel like I've done this video 300 times, but for those who are new to the channel, I'm gonna do this one again, because I really like this. There are a few basic security settings to make sure you get right in your Google Workspace account to protect you and to protect your staff. I don't know how many times I've said this on the channel, but by far, if you do one thing, enforce two-factor authentication, please. Enforce two-factor authentication. I'm gonna say it one more time, enforce two-factor authentication. You do this one thing and you will remove 80% of threats to Google Workspace because it's trivially easy to come across someone's username and password combination for an email address. They are all over the internet because sites get hacked all the time and us humans are pretty lazy and many of us reuse our passwords. Now, if you're super diligent and you have a password manager and you have a different password for every website you access, okay, sure, maybe you're a little bit more immune to that. But are you immune to clicking on a link and putting your Google username and password in accidentally to something that you didn't realize was Google's website? Uh, maybe not, because it gets me almost sometimes. So how do you switch it on? Let's go and switch it on. You do this and you're gonna be pretty safe. And I'm gonna take you through some other stuff as well, but let's do the important stuff. So we go into our admin panel and when we're inside our admin panel, we're gonna to go to our security and then we're gonna to go to authentication and then two-step verification. The most important thing that you need to know here is number one, switch it on for everyone in the company. Number two, I recommend if you're switching it on for the first time, you don't enforce it immediately. You give your team a bit of time to switch it on. So give them about a week or two to get it set up. Next, my recommendation is to give them a week of grace period to enroll. Next, my recommendation would be to allow anything except for text and phone call. Hit save and then you're good to go. Okay, so what else can you do for security? Well, this one's gonna get a bit technical, but it's important to have your DNS settings correct. I've got lots of videos on the channel on how to get your DNS settings done, how to check them, and even how to get them set up if you need to set them up correctly. But the fundamentals are DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. And those are three security protocols that act like a little bit of a bouncer for your emails. So if someone's trying to email you pretending to be someone else or someone's trying to use your email address pretending to be you trying to spam someone else, well, it blocks them from all of those things happening. That's probably the second most common issue we see in businesses. And it's not necessarily that Gmail is insecure. It's not even that it's insecure for you to send or receive emails in and out of your business. What might happen is someone pretending to be you, emailing your staff, asking your staff to pay money into a supplier account, which happens to be a different account, and telling you, oh my God, this supplier is gonna cut us off if we don't quickly send them some money, and these scams are so sophisticated, they're probably gonna use the name of one of your real suppliers, because if they're already into your email, they've already got your supplier names, at that point, well, you might just slip up and give the wrong person a whole bunch of money. Now, to prevent that from happening, DKM, DMARC, and SPF go a long way to protecting emails coming in and emails going out of your business. It blocks a whole bunch of emails from even landing in your team's inboxes, meaning that a lot of those kind of scams won't even make it in front of your staff. Make sure you get your DNS right and you'll be safe. Okay, let's think, what else could we do for security? I've got another good idea, something that I really like to do for high profile websites in my business is to set managed bookmarks for those websites. It means that no one's gonna accidentally open up a new browser tab, type in a typo of a high profile site and land on a fake site. If you train your team to use a managed bookmarks menu, then they're more likely to be in the habit of accessing the right link every time because you've dictated it and they're less likely to accidentally go to the wrong place. So we manage bookmarks inside our Chrome browser settings. So if you go to Chrome and then settings, this will work on a Mac, on a PC, on a Chromebook, anywhere that you're signed into Chrome, which is great. So first up, I'm gonna choose who I want these to be applied to. Typically, you're gonna be applying it to the main top level organizational unit here, which means it applies it to the whole company. If you wanna apply it just to a certain group of staff and you've got other units set up, then you can apply it to a certain group. Now I go ahead and search here for bookmarks. And you can see here on the menu is managed bookmarks. It's even got some little icons to let me know that this will even work on iPhone and Android devices as well, which is pretty cool. 
So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here we have a list of bookmarks that I've created and I can go ahead and add an additional bookmark if I like. And as I said, I recommend you adding any important website that may have important financial information. <laughs> I mean, canva.com probably doesn't, but you get what I'm saying. Anything that's important, that's critical to your team, go ahead and add it to the list here. Hit save and you know, this might take a couple of minutes to deploy down to your staff, but it's really easy to set up and update. And once that's been saved, I can look in the top of my browser in the top left hand corner. I can click there and it will show me all of the links that I've designated and that will be pushed down to all of my team automatically. Now you can see the one I just created Canva has already been dropped in. So there you go. We've got the Canva website working and thank you Google for being efficient with deploying your policies. So if you're a small business owner, you're probably the super administrator for your Google Workspace account. That is not a great idea. What is much smarter is setting up a separate super administrator account, which you only use when you need to log in and change important settings inside Workspace. If you have access to an admin account and you're using it day to day, number one, you might accidentally click the wrong button and change a setting that breaks something. No offense, but that does happen sometimes. Number two, it's good practice to keep a separate account because if you're using an account every day, it's gonna be much more vulnerable to someone potentially snooping your username and password combination and getting access to your account. Obviously, if you're a director of the business and you're the person on the website, you are the first person that somebody's gonna target if they're trying to break into an account. So if you've got the keys to the whole kingdom, well, that gives someone access to absolutely everything and that's not really ideal. So setting a super administrator account as an alternative account doesn't have to necessarily be expensive. You can do that with a free cloud identity account. Now I've got some guides on how to set that up on the channel, but effectively it lets you create an account where you have a user, but they don't have a mailbox. They will have access to the admin panel, but they won't have access to Google Drive, mail, chat, calendar, all the other things, but you don't pay for a license, which is a really, really nice feature. Thank you, Google, for that. That would be a recommendation on where to set up your admin user separate to your business owner user. And you set up the admin, you give them super administrator privileges, and then you log in as that admin and you go back to your account and you remove your administrator privileges. Now you might decide, ah, you know what, from time to time for convenience, you want the ability to like reset someone's password, right? You don't wanna to have to go into that admin account every single time you gotta deploy a new user or set up a password. If you wanted to, you could give yourself the user management permission. And that will allow you to deploy new users like when a new staff member is starting and also do things like reset passwords, which is useful as well, or even suspend accounts when you need someone to be off boarded. So don't think it has to be an all or nothing thing with your settings as much as possible, the super admin account. Yeah, sure, you wanna keep that away, but you can use your own account for some basic administration, or if you wanna be extra safe, Nothing at all, let someone else do the administration. If you're a customer of IT Genius, we can do the administration for you as well. If you sign up to Concierge, head to our website and check out the plans, see which one suits you. You can go to our team, ask them to get virtual assistant style technical tasks done for you. Want a new user added, we'll take care of it for you. Offboarding someone and want to save all of their data and archive their emails, we can take care of that for you as well. Got a spreadsheet and need help with a formula, want to connect two different apps together using Zapier, all of those things our team can handle. And if you're interested in an audit or a review of your business, head along to the website, check out the audit page or the consultation link, and you'll be able to chat to our team. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.